Hey guys, Josh here from Sportitude Running. Today I have got one of the most exciting shoe reviews I've done in a number of years. And I say that because this shoe here to my left, your right, is the Hocket Mark X. It's been a shoe that I've used now for the best part of six weeks, going back now. Um, and I've used it for a number of different runs. I've used it for long, easy days. I've done tempo runs in it. I've done some uh, gradual pick-me-ups out the door at home. And I've really enjoyed what this shoe is all about and what it represents. It's extremely exciting and I cannot wait to get into it the deep dive details of this shoe. But today's review is comparing it to the Hocker Mark V. Now, this shoe here has been a great reliable shoe for a number of years um, with Hocker. They have done some subtle iterations from one season to the next, actually significant changes to be honest, from the first original um, Mark franchise to what it is today, the Mark V. Still a very exciting shoe. I like what this shoe represents. It is a really different shoe in regards to the output performance of the midsole, and which is what this review is going to be all about today. But definitely talking to the same same person, the Mark V, you can certainly use it for mileage running. It's a lighter mileage running shoe. It won't last quite as long as like a Clifton, for example, but that's okay. That's what you get with a lighter shoe. Easily put on the foot and do some tempo runs inside this shoe, intervals, and also your progressive runs as well. As I touched on, the exact same running uh, runner could use the Mark X for what they use Mark V for, but it's all about the midsole today because the performance output is quite different. So in today's review, we'll go through the outsole, the midsole, the upper, give you all the nitty gritty details that you need at home to, who knows, maybe make one of these your next shoe purchase. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. Okay guys, let's jump straight into the comparison of Mark V to Mark X. We'll start with the upper first. Now, with the Mark V, uh, Hocker have used an engineered mesh. However, it is a recycled mesh. So uh, I like it when brands do repurpose materials and find a way to en uh, execute them in any part of their shoe. And Hocker have done that with the Mark V. What we have with regards to this shoe is a pretty similar breathability setup to what we have with the Mark X. And talking to the Mark X um, upper configuration, we have a Creel Jackass mesh. Now, what does that mean and how does it compare the two side by side? Technically speaking, the Creole Jacquard mesh will be marginally stronger with regards to its overall um, hold and performance from K1 right through to the last kilometer of this shoe. And the other thing too with both of these shoes is they use almost identical tongues with regards to how thick they are and very breathable with regards to how they sit on top of your arch. Both have gusseted construction, so therefore they're designed to keep your foot in position on top of the platform. Major difference between the two of them is more around the Achilles sort of setup. So you can see with the Mark V, we have this Achilles flare and with the Mark X, we have more of a traditional style heel collar with regards to its execution up top. Internal heel counter with both almost identical with regards to how high that plastic um, support system sits. So no real benefit between this uh, Mark X to the Mark V with regards to the overall heel cup and fit and feel. It's just you got the Achilles flare on offer with the Mark V. The other thing to note is widths. It's important to obviously call this out when brands do do widths. In the Mark V, we have a traditional width in men's D and a 2E offering. And in the ladies, we have a B and a D. So we've got two widths on offer with the Mark V. Generally speaking, when a brand launches a new shoe, it's very, very rare they'll make it in two widths because they kind of are testing the market. So with the Mark X, we only have standard width on offer, men's D and a ladies B. Okay, let's just jump straight to the outsole because this won't take long. In the Mark V, we have the rubberized EVA uh, technology on offer. So you can see on the side of this shoe, it almost does become a part of the midsole. So there's almost two layers of midsole technology. We've got the Profile Plus top layer, and then we have this rubberized EVA bottom layer, which then wraps around to become a part of the outsole. And you can see the exposed prof Profile technology on offer through here with this little decoupled call out in the back half of this heel unit. What we found with this shoe is it became really durable actually to be honest like I always have a few question marks on offer when brands don't strategically place rubber in high abrasive wearing areas it actually held up pretty well I still don't think it's as durable as what um, Hocker could have made with regards to this shoe but then again this is not really a shoe that someone is going to do everything in technically speaking now you can that's absolutely fine but it still is pitched to that person that will have this as potentially the second shoe in their rotation so it won't be doing all of the running um, so therefore you can sort of reduce the weight a bit not have rubber placed on the bottom of this shoe and calling out that rubberized EVA on offer down the bottom 
Now, with the Mark X, we need to put a little bit more time and effort into this uh, outsole. So what um, Hocker have used is they have used a durabrasion technology, and that's the same compound in the forefoot as it is in the heel. It is really thin. So what we tend to find there is it's it's not going to be an over-intrusive outsole, so it won't add an extra weight or an unnecessary weight in areas you don't need it. However, it is a very durable rubber. I have used this shoe here for a number of runs uh, here in Adelaide from wet days to dry days, bitumen to pavement. I've even gone off-road here on and used it on a gravel surface around a uni loop here in Adelaide, and it has performed extremely well. I have really liked what this outsole has done for the overall performance of the Mark X. Let's get to the exciting part of today's review and talk all things midsole. I'll start with the Mark X first. So stats first, we have a 39 mil stack in the heel and a 34 mil stack in the forefoot. And that's for the offset of five millimeters. That's in the men's. In the ladies, it is a 37 heel, 32 forefoot, again for that offset of five millimeters. Now, in comparison to the Mark V, it is the same heel to toe offset, but we're 10 mil closer to the ground. So we've got a 20 9 mil heel in the heel and a 24 mil uh, forefoot for that variance of five millimeters. And in the ladies, it's uh, 27 heel, 22 forefoot. So you still have the same offset, but significantly closer to the ground. Now, let's talk about the how and the why with regards to both midsoles. The Mark X has two different uh, midsole technologies on offer. We have a Piba foam, which is their Profi Plus top layer, and that is wedged with a full-length Pbax plate. Underneath that Pbax plate, we have Hocker's just EVA foam, and it is a little bit firmer than their traditional EVA that we see in what the Clifton's and Bondi's, for example, and the reason it needs to be a little bit firmer is to uh, allow that midsole or that Piba foam and that Pbax plate to actually have some structure and integrity and hold to keep that foot on top of this midsole and performing quite well. Now, I just want to call out a couple of slight technical um, features that, that need to be called out. So you can see here on the lateral side, this EVA foam does come up and almost kisses the lateral side of the heel counter drops back down and comes through to the forefoot where it drops off. On the medial side here, we don't have any sort of strategically placed arch support or guidance support as such. So it is still targeting a neutral runner, same as the Mark V. But you can see through here, the EVA foam comes a little bit closer to the ground underneath the heel and the Piba foam sits on top the whole way through on that medial side. Now the Piba foam does sit slightly inside that EVA foam. So it does create a bit of a wall because if you have a really responsive foam sitting on top of a EVA foam, which is your durable foam in this instance, you're going to get a little bit of instability. So what um, Hoka have done is they've created a bit of a wrap where that EVA foam almost cups that Piba foam, that Pro 5 Plus foam to actually hold it in place so it can perform exactly what it is intended to do or how it's intended to perform. The Piba's plate is relatively stiff through to the forefoot, so I think that's a really good thing. It needs to be because that's exactly what they wanted to achieve with this shoe. It needs to be a really snappy shoe through toe off. However, not making it too stiff where you feel like your forefoot's having to work really hard. And I feel they've executed that quite well with the Pro Fly Plus or that Piba foam top layer. Because it is quite thick through the forefoot, you're actually getting a really squishy foam underneath the ball of your foot. So therefore, your forefoot can sink, compress, and engage your metatarsal heads to then snap and toe off, but also getting that really rigid feel or that rigid um, integrity with that P-Bax plate. So a lot going on with this midsole and obviously being 10 mil higher, there is a significant performance fit and feel in comparison to Mark 5. Now, Mark 5, we still have the Pro Fly Plus top layer. It isn't quite as soft and as spongy as what they've executed through here with Mark X. However, that's mainly due to the fact this is a slightly lower profile shoe as we touched on being 10 mil closer to the ground with that rubberized um, EVA bottom layer. So what I found with this shoe specifically is that um, it is a shoe that I would like if I wanted more of a proprioceptive feel. If I want to have a connection with the ground or kind of know where my foot placement is every single step, this is absolutely fantastic. However, um, I certainly prefer a shoe to have a little bit more in the midsole so I can actually put some force through that, um, that midsole technology, engage that plate to generate that propulsion. Now, being the fact that this shoe here is going to be more responsive, what um, Hocker have done, which we touched on with the upper part of this review, is using a jacquard mesh, a stronger conform fit up top. There is going to be a little bit more velocity of movement inside the Mark X, 
Thus, the variance between engineered to jacquard mesh. A stronger hold on top of the foot through here. So therefore, that foot will hopefully stay in exactly the position it needs to, to transition from entry, mid starts, and release with this shoe. You can get a little bit lighter with regard to the offering. However, saying that, it's still a good durable upper in the Mark 5s. It's just not quite as structurally sound across the saddle part of the fit with regards to both shoes. Um, I do want to touch on, as I said, they do target the same runner. I mean, they do target someone who wants a versatile shoe. I mean, you can use them both for everything. I just said in this review that I wouldn't be using the Mark V for everything because it won't wear wear as long as what a Clifton would, for example. But in saying that, I know a lot of people have, have grabbed this shoe and used it for everything, but it is certainly a great second shoe in your rotation, the Mark V. But if you're looking for that super trainer feel, a shoe that's going to give you that really cushioned, stable but responsive fit underneath the foot, the Mark X is absolutely one you should be considering. I actually found it pretty hard to run slow inside the Mark X. Um, usually when I get a shoe, I like to dial in specifically what run I'm thinking about and what run I'm doing as a part of my, my training program. But getting out the door, running in this shoe, it was very hard to run slow. And that is a good thing um, in regards to the overall performance of the midsole, but it's also a bad thing for those people who are wanting to get out the door and just go for an easy day inside the Mark X. Perceived effort at pace, significantly less inside the Mark X in comparison to the Mark V. That's for me personally, um, which is exactly why I love this shoe. It's one of my favorite shoes of 2023, and I cannot wait to do more and more kilometers inside the Mark X, that's for sure. So let's talk about shoes that are similar to the Mark X. Now, this super trainer category is growing um, significantly. A lot of brands are putting in a lot of effort to having a shoe that's extremely versatile that could go in literally any single uh, run on someone's training program. So Super Comp Trainer from New Balance is certainly one I'd put into the same conversation. V1 to V2 with that shoe is significantly different, but V2 now I reckon runs very similar to the Mark X. You also got your Adidas Boston 12, pretty similar shoe. Your Puma Deviate Nitro 2 uh, as, as another option to consider. I wouldn't say the Magic Speed from ASICS would fall into this category, but I would certainly say the Super Blast. While it doesn't have a plate, it is a super trainer. So some a shoe that could be used for multiple different runs out on the road. So while this category is growing and all brands are putting in shoe or shoes into this specific space to offer that variety of trainers for you, the running community, the purpose is the same, but the feel and performance can be slightly different from one brand or one shoe to the next. So do keep that in mind. While we do categorize them as super trainers, the feel and output will be probably well, significantly different from one shoe to the next. So it's always worth coming into a store like our Sportitude running, have that conversation, going through a shoe selection process and doing process of elimination to find the one that works best for you. So I can tell you right now, Mark X in that category is the best shoe that works for me. I really like what this shoe is all about. So thank you very much for tuning in watching today's comparison review between Mark X and Mark V. Just a quick summary of what we've gone over. We have a Creole Jacquard mesh in the Mark X, which is a stronger conformed construction in regards to the recycled engineered mesh with the Mark V. Lower stack height with the midsole, so we have um, 10 mil lower from the Mark X to the Mark V. So this is a lower profile shoe. And the outsole itself, we have rubberized EVA on offer in comparison to your Durabrasion outsole, which is what the Mark X has underneath the foot. But the midsole is pretty much where all the change is. We have two layered um, technology on offer with this uh, Mark X, the PE bear foam top layer, which is the Profile Plus, EVA bottom layer, full length p backs plate so there is a lot more inside this shoe which is probably a great segue to let you all know at home that it is marginally heavier because there is a higher stack a bit more technology on offer 266 grams for a round of men's size nine and a half 227 grams for a ladies size seven and a half in the mark five we dropped down to 230 grams in a men's size nine and a half and 193 grams for a ladies size seven so significant weight variance but in the trade-off here is more uh, durability and a little bit more versatility with regards to overall performance with the Mark X, that's for sure. So thank you so much for tuning in, guys. If you've got any questions with regards to this shoe or the Mark V, drop it in the comments section below. I'd love to know your feedback with regards to the Super Trainer category. If you currently have one in your rotation, let us know below how it's going for you. We'd love to hear from you, the running community, all over the world. So thank you so much for tuning in. Hit that red button, stay notified, and we will keep 
keep pumping out shoe reviews like this for you, the fantastic running community all over the world. Thank you very much, guys. Until next time, stay safe, be kind to one another. Happy running. Keep chasing those PBs, and we will see you soon. Take care.